So, what's the time? We probably all asked this question at some point in our lives, and probably most of us have got the hilarious response of time you've got to watch, but anyway. Obviously, computers need to somehow keep track of time, and they don't have a watch. So, how do they keep track of time? Well, they use something called the Unix timestamp. And all that is, is this. Just a number in your computer that's going up by one, one second, every second. Tick, 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 tick. And from that, you can work out the date and the time. So as that's incrementing, you can then work out the date. But as some of the issues among you have probably realised, as that's incrementing up, it can also increment down. Which means on our timeline, we have at some point a zero spot. And then that zero spot corresponds with the birth of a saviour. Sadly, it is not two dinosaurs fighting over a table saw, but it is in fact the birth of the Unix. And this date and this zero time is specifically referred to as the Unix Epoch. And it is the 1st of January, 1970, at midnight universal coordinated time. And then that is all this number represents. It is the number of seconds that have elapsed since the 1st of January 1970 at exactly midnight. So I can tell you right now it's been uh, 1 billion, 1 billion, 674 million, um, 663,364 seconds since the 1st of January. And then uh, some, some of you might be thinking, why? Why is it 1970? Why is it not 1969? Why is it not 1960? Well, at the time, the Unix operating system was being, de was being developed in the early 1970s at Bell Labs. And what they realized is that with the current method of storing numbers, they would have a slight issue going into the future. So what they needed was to have the zero date as fairly recent so they could go back in time, but fairly recent again so that they could have a long time going forward. And we'll come on to that later. According to one of the designers, Dennis Ritchie, who invented the C programming language as well, it was convenient, because obviously if it's on the decade, it can nicely translate to our decimal system of storing years. And coming going on from convenient, it's just an integer. An integer that's going up one second every second. And therefore that makes comparing time relatively easy. You don't have to worry about modular arithmetic when comparing two times, because you can just subtract one from the other. You then can work out the number of seconds and then just use the modular arithmetic. And because it's just an integer, you know there's always going to be 60 seconds in a minute, 3,600 seconds in an hour, and 86,400 seconds in a day. So that makes arithmetic really easy. And then the second advantage is time zones. Because we always know it's from UTC, or Universal Coordinated Time, it doesn't matter whether I'm in either America or the UK, if I start a countdown and say that it's going to end at this specific timestamp, if they've implemented correctly, the countdown will automatically be correct every single time. And then also another thing is if we change time zones, so if we zoom in a bit, and then enhance, and then let's say I go from, say, Warwick to Rome, the timestamp that's stored in my computer doesn't need to change at all. It just needs to say that we just update the value of the timestamp compared to when it is. Which makes it fairly easy. However, there's a couple of problems with the Unix timestamp. The first one is shutting down. If we say that the CPU is updating the timestamp and then the timestamp is stored in main memory, then we have a problem when we shut down. Because obviously the CPU doesn't receive any power, so it can't update anything. And depending on what memory we're using, if that doesn't have power, it can't update anything. And so the solution to this is that we don't actually shut down the entire computer. If you've ever, if you've ever seen on your motherboard, there's probably been a battery on it. And what that battery does is power a tiny chip here called the RTC, or the real time clock. And this is what's actually storing the Unix timestamp, and this is what's actually incrementing it, so that even when your computer is turned off, it can still keep track of time. And obviously this, and this isn't going to be perfect, it, it's not an atomic clock or anything, so it will drift ever so slightly. So what happens is that when your computer boots up, large companies such as Apple, Google, Facebook and Microsoft have um, 
servers that what when you ping them or would give you what they think the Unix time thing is. And this is called UTP or the Universal Time Protocol. And then what happens is on boot, they will then set the time and then everything would be happy and you won't notice that anything is going wrong. And then the second problem is with it, with my definition. As I said, is the current Unix timestamp in your computer? I've said that is the number of seconds that have elapsed since the 1st of January 1970. However, the bottom number is the actual number of seconds that have elapsed since the 1st of January 1970. And if if any of you are really quick at arithmetic, you'll notice that they're 27 seconds out of each other. And the reason for this is something called leap seconds. So you all probably know of leap years when we add a day to the month of February. However, what's happened is as the moon is slowly moving away from Earth, then this gradually slows the Earth's rotation. And every so often, we need to take away a second from the current time. And what that means for normal people is that our clocks go 23.59.59, 23.59.60, and then we go on to the, on to the next day. However, the Unix times down can't do this. So what we do is, rather than going from the time, we go, let's say it's happening at 100, we go 99, 100, 100, 101. And then we don't, we don't care about the leap second. So what's happening is that the Unix timestamp is gradually growing apart from 1970, and we just discard the number of actual seconds and assume everything is, is fine. We can solve this the same way we solve the um, seconds issue, is we just, again, ping either Apple or Microsoft or somebody else and say, hey, what do you think the timestamp is? And they'll update it for you. And now, we go on to the even more fun bugs. And as and then as I'd write in this in a slightly drunken haze, I realized that the release that some of the bugs I'm about to talk about follow nicely the release order of the Star Wars movies. And I have realized I'm very appropriately attired for this joke. And so we go on to a, a Star Wars guided tour of some various bugs with Unix. So we go, obviously, the first one. A new hope. And can anyone tell me what the problem is with these? So we have a seemingly normal Twitter account and my pro and my um video is for my one three two submission. Anyone see anything wrong? Yeah? Do the time stop for uploading accretion and the account is zero. Yeah. So if you have a look, the the Twitter account was updated in 1970, and the videos were loaded apparently 53 years ago. And if we look at each company was founded, we see it's several decades before there were even a glint in their founder's eye. And the reason for this, as as you have mentioned, is that the timestamp is zero. Somehow, somewhere, the timestamp has been overridden as zero. How can this happen? Well, the first one is a very bad crash. What can happen is, is if your computer shuts down, it can zero out the values of your current time stamp in the RTC, and therefore your computer thinks it's the time is zero. It's perfectly happy with that. Zero is normal. And we'll just say, it's okay, it's 1970. Have fun. The other option, or the, one of the other reasons this can happen, is that your CMOS battery dies. If that battery dies, your RTC can't increment the time anymore, and therefore it just keep, and therefore your computer just gets gradually out of time, and only will become the correct time when it syncs properly. And then the final one, which is what was I think was happening with YouTube, is they were trying to keep the compiler happy. There were, there's probably some code somewhere in YouTube software that was calculating the difference between two timestamps, therefore calculating the year and to keep the compiler happy, they had a default value of zero. And then what was happening is that for some reason that code was erroring and returning zero as a default. And so hence 53 years, apparently a YouTube video has been live. And now we go on to part two with the release of the Empire Strikes Back on Intelligent Data. And this is a, another bug that I've personally experienced. So I got this laptop to dual boot into Linux, into Ubuntu and Windows, and what was finding was that if I was in Linux, 
restarted and then went to Windows, I'd find that if the time in Linux was like 11, the time in Windows would be 10. And why was this an hour out? And this was happening during Welcome Week. And what I realized fairly quickly was this was due to the fact that we were in British summertime. And hence, Linux thought we were in British summertime, but for some reason, Windows thought we were selling GMT and only realized its error when it synced with its appropriate time server. And the, after doing a bit of research, I realized that the actual reason for this is the fact what you think, or what I've told you that's the Unix timestamp, is actually two timestamps. One is called the hardware clock, and one is called the system clock. And what the hardware clock is, is what I've currently been referring to as the Unix timestamp, and that's what's stored on your RTC. That's what's incrementing one second every second. And then the Pong boot, this sets the system clock, which is what your operating system actually uses to store the time. And then obviously, because we've got net network time protocol that can update the time, the system clock can also be used to set the hardware clock. And where the bug was happened was that operating systems treat the hardware clock and the system clock differently. Linux loves the hardware clock and will never change it. And what it will do is it will always keep referring to it as UTC. It will always be UTC, it can never change. However, Windows doesn't like that and it will set it as local time or what the timestamp should be in local time. And so what was happening was I was shut down on my computer in Windows. The system clock will be set to 11 or the correct time. However, in UTC, in the pure world, it should be at, be at 10. What would happen is I'd then go to Linux. Linux would power on and set the time to 11. And then was, wait a minute, that's wrong. It should be 10. It would then go to 10. And then I'd happily do my things and then shut down. However, then Windows would come back, set, read from the hardware clock, set its clock to 10. And then that was where the problem was coming from. It didn't, it hadn't realized that Linux had updated it to UTC. It still thought the timestamp was local time and wouldn't have realized its error until it synced with its time server and therefore the error. And if any of you have this exact same bug and wondering, how do I fix it? Just run this in the terminal and all it does is tell Linux, hey, just set, set the timestamp as local time and just be happy with it. And now we move on to the year before 1970 or the prequels. And sadly for this, we have to go to 4chan. And with this, and what this was, was a post that said, if you set your the date of your iPhone to the 1st of January 1970, it would unlock a secret hidden retro theme. However, as with 4chan, there was a catch. You boot your phone, it would turn off. You boot your phone, it would turn off immediately. Essentially what was happening is, you're getting stuck in a fruit loop. Well, what was happening was that we had an integer underflow. What was happening was because your date was 1970, some code would then check into the past. And therefore this would go before 1970 and then break everything. And then as part of its boot sequence, it would then think, oh no, I've got something wrong and power off and then retry. And then for the error, it was just cycling and cycling and cycling, never able to get beyond 1970. However, we can only assume this as obviously it's Apple, it's meant to just work. And therefore, if it doesn't just work, it's somehow heresy. However, what's even weirder about this then is that Apple actually acknowledged the error. Apple acknowledged the fact that if you change the anything to, even up to May 1970, it would break and they asked you to take your phone to the Apple store to have it repaired. And finally, we go on to the sequels. And just like the movies, this is the worst of the lot. So, as I said earlier, we have, a me we have memory issues. What will happen is on the 19th of January, 2038, 3.13 in the morning and seven seconds, 
your Unix timestamp in your computer will be this. This is, in other words, 2 to the 31 minus 1, or if you write it out in binary, this. As you can see, that's a lot of 1s, which means one second later, it will go to this. And if any if anything is using a 32-bit signed integer to store the Unix timestamp, it will not be 2 billion seconds after 1970, it will now be 2 billion seconds before 1970. Or the 13th of January, 1901, at 8.45 in the evening, and just this, this 13th of January, just so happens to be a Friday the 13th. Essentially what's happened is, it's very similar to Y2K, except now we've messed up in binary. And you might think, should I be worried? Well, yeah, no, maybe, kinda. The thing is, only 32-bit systems will be affected. Only systems that store this value in as a 32-bit signed integer will have this as a problem. The problem is that's a lot of systems, all most embedded systems. So, for example, your washing machine, your your oven, maybe even your kettle, if you for some reason have a time in your kettle. But yeah. All of those will start breaking. And more worryingly is legacy systems. So, for example, maybe banks have things being stored like that. If suddenly they break and things overflow and, or, and underflow, that might cause a crash. And to be honest, we don't know the full extent similar to Y2K. And so we basically just have to cross our fingers and hope that whoever's in charge of all these legacy systems has time to fix it and quite conveniently with the end of the world comes the end of this talk thank you very much